Hello guys, in this video we will learn about virtual tabs which are an essential uh, tools in Magento to override and extend functionality. So let's get started to it. So we, as usual, we created the skeleton module and it just rendered this page with this text on it and with the meta title in it. So let's get started with that. So first of all, we create an API. We will create a warehouse management system. It's just a simple system and then we use a virtual type on it so we say warehouse management so we create interface a warehouse management system and this interface will have a public method just one public method will say get warehouse info and this you pass a code warehouse code and it will return an array that's all it does so it just get warehouse info and then it will get the array of the warehouse so this is a management we also want wants a repository so we'll create a interface called warehouse repository interface so the interface will be warehouse repository interface and this will create us just a new warehouse so we just say new warehouse and this also will accept a code warehouse code and the return type will be a data object so we will return in this object this class as a data object Object. and that's it we're done with the repos with the interfaces now we will create the models so first of all we we'll create the warehouse management model so model warehouse management then this will be so the class will be software management and thus will implement the software the warehouse management interface and it will override the warehouse info and in the warehouse info before that we will create a method to return the warehouses so protected function get all warehouses and this will return as an array and then we just return these so the code will be Lon one and the name will be London and the code will be Lon one as in the key and then it has a specific postcode and the same will be on Lon two and Lon three. So all these warehouses within London but different postcodes and different codes. Now to get these info information based on the code pass passed in we will get the warehouses first and this will be this get all, all warehouses and then we will check if the code is within these warehouses so if array key exist code warehouses then we will return warehouses code so if we pass in a lon1 we will get us this array if lon2 we will get us this array else we will return an empty array so that's all to it so this is the management so it will get us the array of the warehouses now we will create the repository so warehouse repository so the class will be warehouse repository implements warehouse repository interface and then we will override the new warehouse so we implement the new warehouse now this repository will accept the manager interface so warehouse management interface warehouse management management then initialize it and then what we going to do here we will be returning a new data object this warehouse management get warehouse info and then passing code so this will create us a new data object and that will initialize it as an object but from the warehouse management we'll get it as an array it's just a dummy example to explain and to describe how these virtual types works now it's a controversial whether to use a management inside a repository or a repository inside a management so this is a topic for another video but for now we are just interested in the virtual types now we created those we need to create a di xml file in order to map the interfaces to their classes so we'll create di.xml in m2di so we'll create a preference so the preference for warehouse management interface we copy it paste it here then we go to the implementer warehouse management 
copy it and paste it here now we'll create another preference this time we will go for the repository interface so copy it paste it here and then go to the class as the type we paste it in here and that's all to it now what we need to do is we display the information of the warehouses in the web page here so this is simply done by having a, a view model so we will create a view model as well we'll create a view model example example will implement the argument interface this argument interface belongs to the magento framework view element block and this will have the what we have in here is the warehouse repository interface warehouse repository we initialize the class and then we'll say public function get warehouse so this will get us the warehouse and then we pass in the request interface and it is magenta request and we will return this repo warehouse repository new warehouse request get param code now this will return a code but if there is no param it will throw an error because it returns a null and warehouse new warehouse accepts a string so best is to cast it as string in order not to get any error and that's it for the view model now we need to inject it into the uh, block so we will go to the layout and then from the layout we will have a closing tag for the block then arguments view model and it will be an object and then we copy this because we are injecting this class as the view model now we've done that we need to display the warehouse information in the template so we'll go here and we will create this so first of all we initialize the warehouse so warehouse equals block get view model get warehouse and this will accept block get request and that's will initialize the warehouse whether with data or empty now what we need to do is to display it so say for example if it is if because what we get in here is a data object so we can call is empty method on it so if it is not warehouse is empty so if it is not empty then we close the end if and if now we will have a p tag and then what we going to display it just say text for it so warehouse get name and then colon and warehouse get postcode so that's all we need so if we just click cache cache flush config layout block html and then we will need also to disable the full page cache disable full page now if we refresh we get nothing yet but if we go index index code lon one this is displaying the london and abc so there is something in here need to be parsed because we are what we are doing here copy this and then delete everything here paste here so this one should work just fine so london abc one one but if i go lon two we'll get those df two 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 now this is just a typical example of how creating the API and using the view model. Now the requirement is to have a virtual type to extend the functionality. What we can do here is we extend the target class and then make it injectable into the view model how to do so is as follows so first of all we will in the model we'll create a management extended so i will go and create warehouse management extended in the clear type namespace training virtual type example model now is class warehouse extended extends the warehouse management class and this will have extra functionality what we're going to do is to override the get all warehouses method so we here having extra warehouses man for manchester 2 man 1 for manchester 1 sorry and this will have a name and postcodes and then perm 1 is permingham and has code and postcode and then it will return a merged array of the parent method with uh, of the parent information so it will merge whatever in here they will be merged into one array so this array will be merged with the london information now if i go 
to the here and then type man1, I get nothing because there's no man1 yet. This is extended, but it does nothing. So to use it, we will go to the DIXML file. And in the DIXML file, we will create a virtual type. So we will have a virtual type. And the name of it, I will name it warehouse repository extended. So you can see the virtual type will target the repository, but the extended class will be management and the type will be the repository here warehouse repository so this is the virtual type not the one you extend but the one uses the extended class because this repository uses the warehouse management we want to extend the warehouse management and then make a virtual type of the warehouse repository because it uses this class and inject this class instead of this class so that's done and now we will go to the arguments and the arguments we will have warehouse warehouse management and this will be an object and we need to go and get this one and inject it here so the virtual type is created but is not used still not used any, anywhere in the code so if you go flush cache and refresh you still get nothing because it's not used anywhere in the code to use it we will create a type type will be the view model so we copy the view model put it in the type and then the arguments will be warehouse repository the warehouse repository passed in as the warehouse repo the actual warehouse repository with the warehouse management but we want the warehouse repository that is warehouse management in extended injected into it which is the virtual type so we just copy this and paste it in here and this will be object as well and this will tells magento whenever you go there and see the example view model in instead of injecting the warehouse repository do this instead inject the warehouse repository in extended because this extended warehouse repository has the management extended in it instead of the warehouse management now if we click cache and then refresh now you can see the man one will get us the manchester if we go berm one we will get birmingham if we go lon two we will get london so how to create a virtual type now now let's go to, first of all to the warehouse management and now we want to add more stores to the get all warehouses but this is protected you cannot do it by plugin and you cannot do it by observer so you can there is no way of injecting or adding more warehouses to this method because it's protected the first thought you will think of is to create either a virtual type or you will create preference for this class but we are going for the virtual type to create a virtual type you just extend this class because you are interested in this method you create a class subclass of this one but don't use it anywhere it just add more data to it and leave it there now look at the class originally and see where it has been used it's been used in the warehouse repository so you want to inject this class with the extra information with the warehouse information in it you want to inject this class in the warehouse repository instead of the original class now this is the second step you have identified now the warehouse repository is being used in the view model now you would say i want to create a virtual type of this warehouse repository and inject it into this example view model the way you do it is you created this extended class and subclass of the original class of the warehouse management and you made it just a subclass and left it there but now you want to create a sub uh, a virtual type of the warehouse repository in order to inject it into the view model first of all think of have the first view model and say i want to inject a different class or a virtual type or a subclass of the warehouse repository you inject it here and then work it downwards now you create the virtual type of the repository and inject the extended warehouse management in inside it now you only use this extended class in the view model if you call the repository 
repository interface in any other class or will get you the original now you know how to target or how to work out virtual type classes now you would say how I am driven to create a virtual type or a preference to create a virtual type you only create a virtual type when you are interested in one area of the application so you only want to affect this area this route or this page because you, you want to use the extended functionality of the warehouse only in this view model that's why you create the virtual type other than that if you want to use it everywhere then just create preference because preference will make more sense than a virtual type you don't want to create virtual types of all, all over the place in the IXML file in every class you inject the extended because a preference will make more sense to it but since you want to use it only in this area then you would create a virtual type just work it downwards from top to bottom so you would target the class you want the extra functionality in it and then create a virtual type of the user class and then create a subclass of the used class which is this one I think this is it and I hope this is useful and clear and I'll see you next time